Kevin Estella here. Um, guys, I get a lot of requests for what do I carry in my vehicle? And if you are familiar with the video that we did earlier in 2023, where I review the contents of my everyday carry bag, then this video is gonna be very similar to that one with respect to what I carry and the why. So I'm gonna put this away, I'm gonna put it in the passenger seat and we're gonna get right down to business with what I carry in the back of my Forerunner. Okay, so uh, let's preface this by saying that these items fit my particular needs. This is my daily driver. This is not the vehicle that I keep in the garage and take out on the weekends. I have approximately 180,000 miles on this vehicle right now, and it does a little bit of everything for me. I will give credit to whoever gave me product, and I will give credit to whoever I bought product from throughout this, and I'll just kind of run through it little by little. Uh, we'll start at the top. So this whole system back here, this rack system, is from Cali Raised LED. Cali Raised LED makes this Molly panel, which um, gives you this reclaimed space up here that you normally can't really put stuff up there. And that's where I keep a blanket. This is a, a wool blanket that has a nylon sleeve on the other side from Prometheus Design Works. Some spare cordage. Long before ratchet straps, I was tying canoes down on tops of vehicles with just cordage. So that goes in there. And I always have my trusty Estella survival vest from Sleeping Indian Wool. This happens to be the prototype that I wore to Alaska back in the day. So this system right here, it serves a couple of purposes. One, it gives me that reclaimed space. It also gives me places to hang other things out of the way. My good friend Jerry Young sent me these. These are magnetic flares, and I have a few of them in my vehicle, and you can set them up. This one, the battery's dead. I guess I have to change that one out. But guys, remember, one is none, two is one, and you can see the clip right on. So we'll put these off to the side. Now, um, working throughout here, Streamlight. This is their magnetic light. This is really useful for working right here. Um, you know, we always have like the, the door light we can use, but having a brighter light that I can move and reposition and use it in all different ways, um, that's something that goes a long way with me. So this is magnetic and I just mount it out of the way, just like that. All right, now let's look at this and just get this out of the way. This is courtesy of Staples. I ended up buying this. Um, if you don't wanna buy one, you could probably, if you're of the mindset, acquire one. Strategically transfer equipment to an alternate location at your local convenience store. So inside here, this is where I keep some of the smaller stuff that could kind of jostle around. Not a bad idea to have something that you can kneel on when you're working uh, on your vehicle, whether you're airing up your tires, airing down your tires, or whatever. This is just a seat pad from Tough Possum Gear. I have a couple of these. You can also use it for signaling. This is a folding chair that I've actually taken backpacking small enough to stay in my vehicle at all times. And you know, you never know when you just wanna take a load off and you don't wanna sit here in the, the back of your vehicle and you wanna take your chair with you. This is a great idea that I got from one of my Sayak Kali instructors, uh, Tuhan Harley Elmore. This is a folding litter um, that you can use for patient transport. And on the inside of this, when you unroll it, there are additional medical items, an emergency blanket, there's clotting gauze, extra tourniquets, and so forth. And you use the actual litter as your med kit, and that's what you would grab and go if you have to move someone. For changing tires, um, I have my torque wrench inside of a leather pouch that I, I made. This was actually scheduled for disposal. Uh, it was scrap leather, and I decided to take it and repurpose it, and I made my own pouch. So I don't make leather, guys. I don't sell it. I just make stuff for my friends and for myself. 
and I needed to make something for this. All right, when you gotta go, you gotta go. There's toilet paper strategically placed in other parts of the vehicle, but there are napkins back here. I don't wanna have to run there if I need to go now, and this is usually inside this bin. That's all I'm gonna say about that. I came from New England, and this was in my vehicle for that trip. Um, this is an ice scraper and a snow brush. And then if I do need to tow with my vehicle, I keep a, a ball hitch for my vehicle right here. Um, I don't like keeping it in here because you never know where you travel to. Some dirt bag could probably steal that. All right, this is just a, I don't know, I think it's like a boot mat or something like that. Um, I don't remember where I picked this thing up, but it fits in the back of my vehicle. And if I have something that's dirty, wet, or whatever, I put it on top of this. That's usually what that basket sits on top of. Okay, so now moving over here. Let's say something about these boxes. I bought these from Front Runner Outfitters. What I like about them, I've got an extra one down here just for the video. They do stack. And when I go camping, I can set one up for camp kitchen. I can set one up for you know vehicle recovery. I can set one up for like miscellaneous stuff. And this kind of creates like a makeshift table. So these are, are super strong. If you guys have ever bought South African mill surplus ammo, I think it's pretty much the same company because the boxes are almost identical except the mill surp stuff is brown and these are black. But inside of this box right here, this one, has all recovery equipment, which not a super high priority out here. I do mostly highway driving and road driving, but let's just talk about some of the stuff that's in here. All my winch accessories go inside of one of these bags. You might recognize the logo. Um, this houses my controls, some soft shackles from Factor 55, and maybe a couple other small items in there. So we'll tuck that off to the side. Whenever you use a winch, even if it's synthetic cable, gloves go a long way. Definitely if you're using a metal cable. This is a tree strap here in the East Coast. We have a lot of trees on our trails. This makes a lot of sense. This is from Warren. This is a snatch block and if you understand how to winch, you understand the importance of getting mechanical advantage by using this back to your vehicle, uh, as opposed to just straight to an anchor. And then this is a Bubba rope. Um, that's my preference for if I have to pull a vehicle. Now, the reality is I would rather have someone use my Max Tracks boards than have to secure my vehicle to theirs, just because we live in a crazy litigious world. And if I don't know a person, they're getting the Max Tracks boards. If I know someone, together we will install a recovery strap. Now, there is a winch dampener here, but again, this is all just my worst case scenario. If I have to get myself out or someone else out, I'd rather have it and need it than need it and not have it. Okay, so you can see we're kinda emptying out here. Let's just keep going. This is a camping pad, nothing fancy. I can't tell you how many of these I've bought over the years. I like moving from my back to my chest, sleeping both ways. If I need to, I can drop these seats. I can take those boxes and I can lay this thing flat and I can sleep in my vehicle if I need to. Being a professional training junkie, I've slept in the parking lot of L.L. Bean, uh, heading up to some survival schools in New England. I have no shame. I will sleep anywhere as long as I can park my vehicle somewhere. Okay, so now let's talk about this stuff. Here's a pair of boots. You guys can see that I'm wearing sneakers today. I'm Asian, so I'm flexible. I'm bendy. If I have to walk from my vehicle and it's disgusting out, I don't want to walk from my vehicle with a pair of sneakers. I want to put on an actual pair of boots. These are water resistant, good set of danners. Danner boots, good Vibram soles, love them to death. Danner did not give me these, I bought these. And a good pair of boots, oh yeah. So, that's why those are there. Now, if this vehicle has no battery power and I need to get my battery going, well, that's what this pouch is all for. This is a NOCO battery pack. And this thing gets a lot of use. 
Um, the NOCO Boost, it's a battery pack. It has jumper cables on there. You clip it in, you hit the button, and it will get your uh, car going. This is another one of those things that I can hand off to someone and I can not have to worry about hooking my car up to theirs. So most people can figure out how to use this and it's pretty reliable. You just wanna make sure that you keep it charged and you wanna check it at a regular interval. And then of course, jumper cables, standard jumper cables. Um, I carry them in that bag. The reason why it's in this bag and it's up here, if this vehicle's dead, I wanna be able to get to whatever I need to and this is my, my go-to. Um, I can reach it from the inside of the cab. Okay, shovel. Let's talk about a pet peeve of mine. This is a Demos shovel. Um, back in the COVID era, so 2020, I wrote an article for a magazine on the Demos shovel. I paid out of pocket full price for the shovel. Um, and when I got paid, I think I got pretty much broke even on getting this. So one of my pet peeves is when people say, I've got a an item and I use it all the time and you look at it and you're like, it has no wear. This is an honest tool uh, that has done a lot of work for me over the years and that is what it looks like. So this shovel, I like it because it extends to full length and there are times when you want a full length shovel, there are times when you want a little like e-tool. Uh, this is a great, great tool and I do not regret spending what I spent on it. All right, Max Tracks recovery boards. Shout out to my friend, Mike O'Brien. Mike, love you to death, brother. Um, New Year's Eve, a couple years ago, Mike got stuck. I had to drive out to him. He was in Provo Canyon and we got him out with these. His uh, truck was definitely, definitely not getting out unless we had some assistance. This is my original set of Max Trax boards. I carry them on the inside of my vehicle. The reason I don't want people knowing that I've got them, um, so they ride inside and I don't like UV light because it destroys stuff. So it's inside of my vehicle. Now, fun fact, when you're fishing, if you need a place to put your trout at the end of the day, these are great trout holders. Not gonna lie, plenty of dead trout have sat there. The beauty of these in New England, if someone is stuck, I can go up to a person and be like, hey, want me to get you out? Or do you wanna get out? You hand them off to them and they know exactly what to do. Uh, maybe a little bit of instruction. This is my original set that goes back to 2013, 2014. Um, and they've been fantastic all those years. I would say I use those more than I use my winch. Um, I can say that for, with absolute certainty. Those are more useful than my winch. Okay, so now looking at the sides here, I won't take these down, but I'll just explain what they are. I have a medical kit, which is easily grabbed uh, up here. It's the only thing in a gray box with a bright red flag on it. So if I teach a class and my vehicle's there, I'm like, guys, med kit, there it is. I can point to it. People can identify it. That's just held in place by step 22 um, straps, fire extinguisher over there. And then on this side of the vehicle, there's a Rotopax water container. And the reason for that is, well, we set a lot of campfires uh, or start a lot of campfires here at Fieldcraft. That's why I've got that. Um, it's emergency water as well. I don't necessarily worry about swapping it out. I just replace it when, uh, whenever I run through it. So now, before I get to the contents of this, let's talk about what I have on the side. This right here is so I don't have to carry a chainsaw. A lot of people carry a chainsaw on their vehicle, but you're dealing with gas. This is my Katana Boy. And yes, it is a massive, massive saw. This, in my opinion, is worth its weight in gold. You don't have to have gas inside your vehicle. A couple good pulls with this and you're cutting through anything that could be in your way. Now, if you do need to do more wood processing, yeah, get yourself a chainsaw, but for just the occasional tree that's down in the middle of a trail or campsite and hey, you gotta process some wood, this goes a long, long way. By the way, this isn't even the largest one that they make. They make one that's even bigger. Um, pretty pricey. I paid for this one. You can see how much they cost. Okay, here's a backup shovel. Um, many hands make light work. This is a, a folding and trenching tool. This one's from Gerber. And you can see it's covered in dirt, honest tool. Um, sometimes you need the big shovel. Sometimes that little shovel is all you need. And if you gotta run and do number two, this hopefully will handle the job. 
unless it's Thanksgiving and then maybe you need the larger shovel. Guys, this right here, not bad. This is just your folding e-tool. And again, dirty, honest tool. Okay, over on this side, tucked in this little nook, these are all spare tie-down straps. Um, you can see they're tie-down straps because I've used a silver Sharpie to write tie-down straps. And this is for mounting things to my roof box. Um, this is just a cut VS-17 panel to make a flag for anything that's hanging out of the back of my vehicle. There's an old expression, when you're breaking big laws, don't break little laws. Um, if you've got stuff in your vehicle you don't want to get questioned about, make sure that you're abiding by all laws, including having a flag for long things that are hanging out of your vehicle. Now, this, these are all traditional road flares and chem lights. I'll never fault someone for starting a fire with a road flare and chem lights go a long way. So I've got a whole bunch of them in this pouch and those go right there. Uh, more straps, nothing fancy. But now let's talk about this. This is the Boss Strongbox. Boss Strongbox gave this to me um, back in 2021. And what it is, is a very secure way of carrying equipment in your vehicle. Guys, I'll preface this by saying your vehicle is not a gun safe. I don't care how strong your vehicle is. Do not leave guns in your vehicle. Um, I know there's a whole truck gun thing. Well, truck gun should be truck person with truck gun, not just truck gun. This is what I've got in mind. So this is a lot of stuff and it varies and it usually pertains to things that I'm doing on the weekend working for the company. Now, I do a lot of shooting, so I have shooting glasses, sand sock, my binos, ear pro, some tools for sta uh, stapling things up. I've got a small um, shooting pad if I have to shoot prone. I've got a cleaning kit. This goes back to, God, I don't know how long, but I took this to Alaska with me. It's kind of cool, it has everything that you need lay out all your, your kit there. Um, maintenance is important, so that's why, why that's there. And then, you know, there's all sorts of other stuff. You know, we work here in North Carolina, not too far from Spiritus Systems. So shout out to Spiritus Systems. I bought all this, um, but they, I think, make one of the greatest uh, plate carriers out there. So good stuff. And then there's just a random ammo can filled with ammo. And on this side, Let's talk about some of this stuff. This canteen carrier has been with me all over the world, Arctic, jungle, desert, um, and I use it when I teach, so that's in there. I've got legit hard shell uh, rain gear because sometimes when it rains, it pours. I do need to treat this again. Um, it's starting to, to wear through. I've got some miscellaneous camping stuff. You never know when you're going to show up to someone's campsite and they're like, hey, you want something? And you bring your own appliances. Big shout out to Light Fighter. Um, this is their commando field tarp. It's a 10 by 10 tarp. I can attach this to the roof of my vehicle on the mobility experiences. I've actually taken this and I've made my shelter next to my vehicle. So a good 10 by 10 tarp goes a long way. And something great about Light Fighter is that they're made right here in the United States and actually not too far from here. Another ammo can. Um, I'm a big fan of having a legit axe in my vehicle. This one was made by my friend Liam Hoffman. I reviewed this one in Knives Illustrated years ago. Um, Liam's a local maker, the youngest winner of Forged and Fire at one point. And he and I have traveled to Alaska together and South Africa together. Good dude. He actually makes these axes so you can use them as a true hammer. Um, and this axe has done a lot of work. Again, dirty tool, honest tool folding saw. We always say the Pledge of Allegiance at the every single course. Um, we start off the class giving respect. So there's usually a flag in my vehicle for that reason. If for whatever reason this gets left out, there's a little sticker on the back of my car, but usually someone has a flag and we always give respect. We never forget our heritage. Okay, and then the last couple things. This is a, um, a Kafaru bag. Uh, this one is called their Door Gunner and I believe it's called a door gunner. Yeah, door gunner. And uh, this is what I use when I go fishing a lot. Not a bad idea to have carrying capacity if I ever had to leave my vehicle. So that's what this is. And then this is, again, another shelter from Light Fighter. Um, this is a one-person tent. 
and you throw it and it opens up. So I keep that in my vehicle as well. So these contents, they do change, you know, depending on what I'm teaching, but it's nice to have organization. And much like my backpack where things go back to the same place every single time, I'm going to take the time to put what I just showed you back where they belong because I don't want to reach for something when I need it and have to search for it. Everyone's vehicle is going to be slightly different. There are going to be things that people are going to say, well, you didn't pack this and you didn't pack that. Please watch the other video that we did where we went from the front of the vehicle to the back. If you guys have any suggestions, modifications, anything like that, always open to criticism, always open to, to feedback because when you start packing out your vehicle, your person, your backpack, whatever it is, you are embarking on a process and that process never ends. So this is what I carry in the back of my vehicle. I secure the heck out of it whenever I travel to interesting places. And that's why I love this strong box. Not everyone is going to have the means to afford this. Do you, man, right? I'm never going to uh, purchase beyond my means and I'm very fortunate that I've met some great companies that enjoy working with us So it's my way of just giving back showing off the products that they are so kind to extend our way guys If you have any questions, please hit me up Estella at fieldcraftsurvival.com or at Estella Wild Ed on Instagram and on Twitter Otherwise, thank you so much for watching Please check out our other content on socials our new app and our website www.fieldcraftsurvival.com until next time guys. I'm Kevin Estella. Thanks for watching